I'm a product marketer on the Atlassian ITSM team. I'm joined today by Jensen Fleming, who is the product manager leading the charge building the virtual agent, um, and also by special guest Chloe Beckett. Um, Chloe is an IT director at Fastly, and Fastly is not only a Jira service management customer, but um, one of our partners in the Alpha program, helping us to test and develop the virtual agent. So today we'll go through a little bit of the what, the why, the how of what we're building, and we'll talk a little bit about a few simple steps for getting it set up. Then we'll go behind the scenes a little bit with Fastly's implementation and learn a little bit about why they decided to participate in the alpha and what problems they're solving with the virtual agent. Then we'll dive into some demos. We'll walk through a few different scenarios from the configuration experience through to that help seeker side of things. Um, and that will include some really cool stuff that we're building with OpenAI. And then we'll leave a little bit of time for questions at the end. We'll go through a couple little uh, things that are on our roadmap. So let's dive right in. If any of you were at the ITSM keynote yesterday, you heard all about the many symptoms of bad service management, or BSM. Um, they talked a lot about the various symptoms and afflictions you see, like nausea and headaches, um, from these frustrating service experiences and ITSM solutions that are outdated or really complex to set up. So a quick show of hands, and I'm assuming most people in this room have probably encountered some sort of service chatbot at one point or another. Um, quick show of hands, how many of you have had a conversation with a chatbot that you found frustrating? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, you're not alone. 80% uh, of people have experienced some sort of increased frustration when um, dealing with a service chatbot. And that's on the help seeker side, right? But then what about the experience of actually configuring um, these chatbots? I think a lot of service teams find that chatbots will tend to overpromise and then underdeliver when it comes to how quickly you can actually set it up and how quickly you can actually see value. So another quick show of hands, how many of you would consider yourselves a data science expert? <laughs> Me neither. Um, exactly, right? We're marketers, we're product managers, we're IT admins. Um, ultimately, we all want to deliver really great service experiences for our customers, but we shouldn't have to have a data science background in order to do that. As our friends at Forrester said, chatbots are hard and getting them right is even harder. So how are we getting it right with the JSM virtual agent? If you were in the keynotes yesterday, you heard all about our exciting news, our investments in AI across all of our products. Um, we're going all in, bringing more intelligent automation and things like generative AI into all of our products to really help teams accelerate work. And one of those investments that we made, um, you might have heard about it last year if you were at Team and were at the keynote, um, was the acquisition of Percept AI. Um, and Percept, uh, is a virtual agent technology, and fast forward now a year from when we announced that acquisition, and we're fully on our way to integrating that directly into JSM, starting with Slack and Microsoft Teams. As we all know, these chat platforms tend to be where a lot of work gets done and a lot of requests get made these days. So by building the virtual agent directly into uh, our existing native Slack and Teams integration, um, we allow you to better meet your help seekers where they're already working. So in a little bit, Jensen's gonna go through those demos that I mentioned more in depth, but we wanted to give you a little preview now of what a typical interaction with that uh, virtual agent might look like in Slack. So let's say you get a common question in your Teams IT channel. Um, in this case, we'll use a VPN example since something like 10%, I think, of all the IT issues at Atlassian are VPN related. Um, so here Shehab says, I'm struggling to connect from home, can you help? So with the virtual agent connected to that channel, um, without the agents having to actively monitor that channel or manually create any sort of ticket, um, the bot will automatically analyze those incoming requests and respond appropriately. So Shehab confirms, yep, I am indeed having a VPN issue. Then the virtual agent will guide the help seeker through some sort of preset path to help troubleshoot that issue. In this case, he confirms I'm having a certification error. Cool. 
So then in just a couple steps, he's able to troubleshoot that. And then he can let the virtual agent know, yep, I'm good to go, no issue. Maybe he does encounter another issue, he can escalate that to a human. Um, no ticket is created if, he's, if he solves it on his own. So how do you actually get the virtual agent to recognize and handle these requests? Um, before we walk through that setup process, there's a couple of terms that we should uh, go over first. Starting with um, neural network hyperparameters, I assume most of you are familiar with this. I literally don't know what that means, actually. I asked one of our data <laughs> engineers for a good, a good term to use there. Um, that's the beauty of the virtual agent. You don't need to know anything super complicated or data science-y um, in order to set it up. It's completely self-serve. I can do it, you can do it. Um, no data science background required. Um, so let's actually walk through that setup process now, all jokes aside. Um, the first step is creating and discovering intents. Um, and an intent just represents um, a question or an issue or a type of request that you'd ideally like uh, the virtual agent to help a help seeker resolve. Um, so for example, in the preview that we just walked through, the intent would be something like VPN troubleshooting or VPN issue. Um, and these can be created manually if your team already has a good sense of things that you might want to automate. Maybe you already have data or maybe you just have anecdotal evidence of things that you commonly get asked about. Um, and if that's the case, you can just click that button to create an, to create an intent. Um, there's a few simple fields that you fill out. Uh, Jensen will show a little bit of that later. Um, but if you don't know what intents you want to create or which ones will be most helpful for your team, there are a couple different ways that we can help. Um, one is through analyzing your existing request data in Jira Service Management. So we'll essentially take all of those issues, we'll cluster them by topic, and then we'll recommend pre-built intents um, based on the expected coverage. And by coverage, I mean, you know, we talked about earlier, 10% of Atlassian's IT issues are VPN related, so we know that that's a good one to um, have an intent built for. We also provide an intent bank of just generic templates for common IT issues or HR issues, whatever your team, your team type is. And these will all come with some preset basic settings, some training phrases that will teach the bot what to look for in a conversation, um, and then you can customize them further from there. So once you've created those intents, your next step is building a flow for each of those. Um, and flows, like we saw earlier, flows behave a lot like a typical conversation between two humans. Um, the help seeker asks a question, the virtual agent asks some sort of clarifying question, the help seeker responds, et cetera, et cetera. They go back and forth. Um, and each flow is made up of a series of steps and branches, as you can see here, um, kind of like a flow chart or a typical sort of workflow builder. Um, and these flows just help the bot know what to do and at what point the issue is either resolved or needs to maybe be escalated to a human and have a ticket opened. Um, and steps can be something really simple, like we saw earlier, just a short message of text with some troubleshooting instructions, or it can be something a little more technical and complex, like um, changing the request type if you have a flow that requires you to open a ticket. Um, the flow builder requires no code. You click a button, you add a step, you, you fill in whatever um, details for the question you want to ask there or the text you want to provide, um, and then you can drag your cursor around to sort of arrange the flow as you see fit. Spoiler alert, we're also adding another step coming soon. Um, this will automate things like granting software access requests or password resets through tools like Okta. Um, more on that later. So the final step is just to launch and to measure. Um, there are really three main metrics that we track directly in the virtual agent. One is, of course, resolution rate, so how many of those um, conversations or requests were able to be resolved entirely by the bot without any sort of human intervention. Um, the next is matched rate, so how many of those intents that you that you created actually matched up, or sorry, how many of those conversations actually matched to an intent that you created to understand how much coverage you really have of the types of requests you're getting asked. Um, and then the last, of course, is uh, customer satisfaction, CSAT score. Um, and you can look at these holistically, like you can kind of see in this screenshot, 
or you can look at them on a per intent basis um, to see where you might need to make more specific improvements. So speaking of metrics, we've been using the virtual agent internally now for a couple of months, as you maybe heard in the keynote yesterday. Our IT, our IT team and our HR team have both been using it, um, and they've saved well over 2,000 hours of work, um, and over 50% of the incoming requests in those Slack channels have been assisted by the virtual agent. And so now that we've been able to have this internal success, we've been working on actually rolling it out to you all, um, starting with a really small hands-on alpha program. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it off to Chloe to tell you about Fastly and their experience in the alpha program. Um, they're still in early days of that implementation, but they've already just been a tremendous partner in helping us um, understand really what are the pain points that we need the virtual agent to solve. Um, as well as actually influencing a lot of the UI and the features you just saw in those screenshots. Um, so with that, I will hand it off to Chloe. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Nicole. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so who are we? Who's Fastly? Um, so we are a content delivery network, uh, CDN for short. Uh, if we still don't know what that is, we are the backbone of the internet. We actually bring the internet content to you. So we are about uh, more than 1,100 strong employees, uh, offices across three continents, global remote workforce. Um, and this year, our main focus is simplifying, automating everything across the board, from our customer products um, all the way to our internal processes. So some quick stats, um, IT org, 17 of us, uh, various disciplines, support, client platform, and SIS, SAS. Um, we see an average of uh, over 600 monthly tickets um, with an average of 15 day time to resolution. Um, pointing that out, because um, it's important for the next slide. So right, it's ranging from standard password reset, um, hardware assistance, access requests to the more involved, um, SaaS integrations, user lifecycle management, general inquiries, everything. Some of our pain points, context switching. So the past three years, pandemic, the world changed. Um, we attempted to, obviously a, a lot of us in IT, try to stabilize, establish a new normal, uh, trying many different approaches uh, to better support our users while everyone went remote. And that includes creating a dedicated Slack channel to allow our users to escalate and also inquire status of our tickets, right? So now the IT team is forced to work out of multiple systems, uh, which ends up breaking our stream, ticket documentation, tracking, all the fun stuff, not really. Another pain point, our team's time is wasted triaging, opening new tickets, helping the users not familiar or a little bit intimidated by our standard processes, it's bogging us down, okay? Um, I know, IT pros, we already do our best to make it as easy as possible for our users, knowledge base, giving everything, but sometimes it's just not enough. As I've mentioned, 15 days resolution time on average, um, it's the reality. Um, trying to bring automation, trying to just bring that down. We can do this. Um, we do have a robust knowledge base, right? Um, but telling our users, hey, check out the knowledge base, check out the articles, check out the documentation we're doing. Sometimes, like, that's forcing the user to also work out of multiple systems, right? <coughs> so what are our priorities and why virtual agent? Some history, anyone, bubble IQ? Rings a bell. Um, we use the Fastly product, sorry, the Assist product uh, since its inception, right? Um, in the early days, a Denver startup, um, we met with the CEO, Fletcher, um, at the time, called Bubble IQ. They evolved into Help, if anyone's familiar with that one. Um, eventually, Help got acquired by Atlassian, along with Percept. Um, to now bring us assist, right? So this was a natural organic evolution for us. Our users were already used to this. It just made sense. 
With our initiative this year to automate, simplify everything um, without increasing our SAS pro, because that's another fun one, uh, we saw a lot of potential with virtual agent uh, to bridge that gap with our existing Confluence documentation and integration with Slack. So what have we done so far, right? As Nicole mentioned, um, still pretty early, um, but super excited. So we set up the chat. Um, the assist bot is receiving requests right now in a dedicated IT channel, public channel, um, to monitor and just, just get going, right? So this has already enabled 24-7 support, um, and our IT team is not now stuck in this IT channel. We still have some, but we're like moving away from it, so this is super fun. Uh, we also creating intent. Um, so Atlassian actually helped us uh, with you know, the data analysis to identify our historical support request um, and gave us some recommendation and we just started building away. So with that, um, we are actually looking to hit our 30% target of assistance rate for this month. Um, and we're pretty excited. We do have other um, initiatives happening in parallel with this, um, you know, continuing to evolve our knowledge base, plugging everything in. And we're looking to actually get to 50% by Q3. So exciting stuff, super excited. So with that, I will pass it to Jensen to briefly talk about some of the things coming next for our implementation, um, as well as showing some of that in the demo. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you so much. Um, so Fastly's been an amazing partner uh, in the Alpha and have already influenced a number of items on our roadmap and um, we're really excited about the things we're gonna be building based on their feedback. So, so far we started looking at our next steps with them. Um, first, we're gonna expand to other teams. The first one is gonna be the business systems team um, and we're really excited to work with them in order to spread the virtual agent across Fastly. Um, in addition, for the preparation of the upcoming generative QA features that you guys saw yesterday, we're gonna start building out their knowledge base even broader, right? Making sure we can cover those without having to use intents. Um, and finally, we'll start working on the web request automation. So that thing that Nicole teased earlier um, on basically automating all of these access requests and helping increase that resolution rate and lower the, the time to resolution. So we've had great success across all of our four alpha customers. Um, we average a 45% virtual agent assistance rate um, across all of them, and they've only been live for a couple of weeks each. So we're really excited to start begin rolling out our EAP to a broader group of a closed EAP in the next week. Um, so the first cohort will be coming in next week and then um, throughout the next few months. So now that we've talked your ears off a lot, um, you're probably wondering what it looks like live. Um, so let's take some time to see the virtual agent live in action. So as Nicole mentioned, um, there are a few different common scenarios that the virtual agent can assist with. What I'll do is I'll walk you through that configuration as well as the customer experience on the other side. So in honor of one of our excellent keynote speakers this week, um, in highlight of the current state of the world, we've themed this demo, uh, this demo after a classic James Cameron film about a cyborg assassin that goes back in time. So starting with something basic, similar to what we saw earlier with the VPN request, uh, we'll walk through a tier one support interaction where the bot is able to handle the interaction from start to finish without a human joining in. Um, so in this case, we'll build an intent from start to finish, um, and we'll do troubleshooting our number one most repetitive issue, which is how to use a time machine. Let's start by creating an intent. First, we're gonna give it an internal name, like how to use a time machine. And then we'll provide a description that will help us identify the intent's purpose, such as instructions on using this type of time machine. Next, we'll choose a customer-facing display name that will be easy for customers to understand. We'll also create a confirmation question that the virtual agent will ask customers to ensure that it has correctly identified their intent. Finally, we'll add some training phrases that will be used to teach the model when to present this intent to customers. These seed questions will help the virtual agent understand when it should be providing troubleshooting information related to time machines. After clicking Create, we'll be prompted to develop a flow for this intent. A flow is a sequence of steps and branches that direct the virtual agent through a conversation. 
To begin troubleshooting the customer's issue, we want to ask a question that will help us determine the best starting point. We'll start by creating a choice step with the first question. Choice steps present the customer with one of 10 options. Depending on their choice, they will be directed to a different path in the flow. They have two choices in this step, either to hack the system or to use a key card. They'll enter those choices down below. If they choose to hack the system, human intervention will be necessary and the branch will create a JSM issue. If they indicate that they have a key card, we will provide the next step in troubleshooting the time machine. Next, we'll add a choice step with a single option. We'll remove all options except for one and label it next to confirm that the customer has in fact completed this step before progressing to the next one. We'll then utilize one last choice step to provide troubleshooting directions with the customer, with two options confirming if the solution was successful or not. If they were successful, we'll then end the branch with an escalation to a JSM issue. However, if the troubleshooting was successful and they were able to time travel, we will resolve the conversation. The last step is to change the intense status to live and to activate it in our production channel. Now let's go see what this flow looks like in Slack. I'm going to go to my IT team's request channel and ask a question about time machines. When a question is posted to this channel, the virtual agent will directly respond and attempt to confirm my question's intent. It starts by asking me if I'm trying to go back in time. That's correct, so I'll click yes. It then tells me I either need to hack the security system or I need to use a key card. I have a key card, so I'll go down that route. I'm then given the next step. This tells me to enter the time machine using my key card and to enter the date I want to travel to. I submit the year and I click next. The virtual agent then gives me the final steps and asks me to confirm if this was successful or not. I in fact did make it to the past, so I'll go ahead and confirm. Lastly, I'll rate the quality of the troubleshooting I was guided through. Five stars. So what if your customer asks you something that's a little bit more complex, right? It requires a little bit more back and forth. There's multiple options to these branches, uh, multiple choices and, and steps you can go down. So let's talk about something that's a little bit more complex. OK, so let's say we get to the past, but we immediately run into a cyborg and we don't know how to destroy it. Let's go ahead and ask for help. Just like before, we are first prompted with a confirmation question. We confirm that, yes, in fact, we are trying to destroy a cyborg. It then asks me what method I'd like to use to destroy it. I'm going to go with damaging the CPU. OK, next up. Can I sneak up on it? I think I'm stealthy enough. Let's go for it. Shoot, I was overly confident, and it saw me coming. I'm going to need to call in backup. The conversation is immediately escalated to a human. The issue appears in the team's JSM queue for human intervention. The JSM agent can click into the open issue, view the history of the conversation, and respond directly to the customer from JSM. The agent lets the customer know they are sending in backup and to hold tight. The agent's message is sent directly to the customer via the Slack thread the conversation started in. The customer is able to respond directly to the agent without even leaving Slack. Back in JSM, the agent can see the customer's reply and provide an update. In this case, the agent has sent in backup and they were able to destroy the cyborg. After updating the customer, the agent transitions the ticket to resolved. Back in Slack, the customer is prompted with a message to provide a satisfaction rating to their support interaction. I'd definitely give that one five stars. The customer can also add a comment, and both this comment and the satisfaction rating will be synced directly with JSM. OK, now that we've seen the final product of this intent, let's go check out what the flow looks like on the back end. As you can see, this flow is made up of quite a few choice nodes and a variety of options. Each of these options directs a conversation down a different branch with multitudes of outcomes. This flow also includes a step that waits for a customer's written response to continue through the flow. These responses will be tracked on an escalated issue. You can also see that there are a variety of branch enders based on the path the conversation takes, whether it escalates or it resolves. If you wanted to add an additional step with a branch, all you need to do is click the plus button. For example, you may want to change the request type of an escalated ticket if it hits this step. 
So now let's step out of intense a bit, right? So a pro probably a lot of you are saying, um, well, it's really cool, but why would I build an intent for, for a simple Q&A if I already have a knowledge base article set up? Um, and that's a great question. As you saw in yesterday's keynote, we are currently building an integration with OpenAI to search across your entire knowledge base and answer your customers' questions without having to create any intents. So we decided to take a holistic approach to the virtual agent and give you as much control as you need, where for some issues, accuracy is very vital and you want to follow a very specific flow in order to resolve these conversations, and there might be multiple steps in order to troubleshoot those things. But in other instances where it's a simple Q&A and you've already got a great knowledge base set up, you don't have to lift a finger and the virtual agent's generative Q&A will go ahead and answer that for you. Okay, let's see this generative Q&A in action. I'll ask a question in the same request channel, but this time I'll ask about the difference between a cyborg and a human being. As before, you'll see that it threads the response. The virtual agent searches across my knowledge base articles and summarizes all of the information it finds to directly answer my question. I can read just the summary, or I can click into the linked articles to get more details. After I've reviewed all of the information, I can choose to resolve this issue because it has solved my query, and I can rate this interaction. Or if I would have clicked no, it would have escalated this to a human. So earlier, um, we talked about that holistic approach, right? And so how we're taking it in both ways. And the way that it works on the back end is if your customer's question is highly recognized by an established intent, so for example, the time machine, right? Like that had an intent going for it. We will go ahead and we'll respond with that intense conversation flow. However, if the intent doesn't find an established intent, but it does find a KB article, it will go ahead and it will respond with that generative Q&A. If neither of those happens, we will escalate to a human, we'll give them the option to say, hey, I wanna to talk to somebody else, or to rephrase it, but in every instance, that customer is being helped. So the beauty of this generative Q&A is that you can turn on the virtual agent and immediately see results, right? So you could have, a great KB, you turn it on and you have 40% match and resolution rate without having to create a single intent or lift a, lift a finger. Um, and we are launched this internally to our IT team two weeks ago, and so they're testing this out, they're dog fooding it for us, and we're seeing great success so far, and we're working to get it into your guys' hands as soon as possible. So let's talk about the roadmap. Uh, we started to tease a little bit about what's coming next, but we'll touch on just a few more things here. So based on the feedback from Chloe and our other alpha participants, uh, we focused the roadmap on two specific things. So time to value and saving your agent's hours. So for time to value, we're focused on the intense suggestions and discovery that Nicole alluded to earlier, which essentially is clustering all of your data and it's giving you um, the correct intents to start with to hit the highest coverage right off the bat. And the second, obviously, is the generative Q&A with OpenAI that everybody's real excited about. Um, that'll be coming soon. And then in order to save your agent's times and lower that time to resolution, we're working on those web request steps, so automating access requests, hitting API calls, all of that, um, and then also triaging issues for you. So asking the customer the questions that, so your agents don't have to. Asking them like what, uh, what their region they're in, you know, and hitting down these different steps and asking them to fill out the forms for them through more of a, a conversational flow rather than having to go into the portal and fill out all of those forms themselves, or you, typically, is probably what's happening. Um, and then, uh, what's the next one? So ultimately, our goal is to give you a virtual agent experience that is easier to use than other offerings, while being as or more powerful. What we've shared today is just the beginning and the tip of the iceberg, and we can't wait to get you all using it. You can expect to see most of what you saw today in our open beta that we'll be launching in July. Um, and as I mentioned, next week we'll be launching our limited EAP to a select group of customers, and we'll be continue to add teams over the next couple of weeks and months. If you're interested in joining the EAP, um, you can go ahead and scan this QR code, and if you wanna just follow along for updates, I also recommend getting on the wait list. We'll be providing updates through there. Um, and we'll be at the ITSM booth, and we'll also be at the AI booth in the Expo Center if you wanna come talk to us after this as well. Um, so with that, thank you for joining us, um, and we're open for a Q&A. When the bot resolves an issue that it does not create a ticket, uh, how are you retaining that history? 
Great question. So we have a whole selection of analytics. So on that screen earlier, you saw it had conversations, resolution rate, assistance rate. So we have all of that logged and we have the ability, we're building in a, a conversation engine so you can see that. If you wanted more of like an audit log and you wanted every ticket to be tracked to see outside of the virtual agent, you could use that web request node to make every single ticket into a JIRA ticket that doesn't create noise for your help seeker. Um, but we do have all of that tracked in order to look at those analytics. And I can use that same history to help me guide what new intents I need to build based on what uh, answers people didn't find? Correct, yeah. So for the intent suggestions, we're gonna cluster. So we, one, when you jump, come in, we'll cluster all of your existing data to give you recommended intents, and we'll continue to do that throughout the cycle. So we'll take all of the unmatched conversations, we'll cluster those and present them to you and say, hey, we found a new intent for you. You might wanna go and create this. Cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the presentation, a really great feature. I was wondering, uh, have you thought about multi-language support? So great. Uh, when I saw the screenshots, it looked like it was a bit single language-y. <laughs> so uh, yeah, what's your plan on that? Yeah, so right now we're focused on English for this early beta, um, but the recognition model will recognize other languages and it will be able to respond on those. In terms of the UI, it is all in English, but we are building in multi-language support. It is a priority. Okay, thanks. Uh, one more question. Have you thought about data residency? Because I think when it goes to uh, uh, connecting with the AI, with OpenAI, mm -hmm. will it be able for customers like in Europe with very high yeah. data concerns to be able to use it though? Great question. So it relies on JSM chat and the Assist app right now, which is not yet data resident, but we do have a, an entire team working on that right now and it's a, our number one priority is to get data resident. Cool, thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think the feature itself was super nice and like exciting to see this roll out. Um, one of the concerns that I have is um, I noticed that the options are only Slack and Teams right now, but I'm hoping maybe in the future uh, that we'll be able to utilize this functionality in like maybe the um, the help center for Jira because we want that all centered in one place, or if we wanted to put that into like um, like a website help center um, and then like interface this through like an API or something. Great question, yeah. So we are focused on Slack and Microsoft Teams first, but we really want to put it in the portal as well, in the help seeker, and then potentially in the future maybe in the external widget, but we have no, no commitments to that at this time, but it definitely is on my mind. Cool, thanks. Hi there. Um, I was wondering, are the intents completely agnostic to the to the chat client? Yeah. So you, we don't, you don't have to do anything special to uh, support either Microsoft Teams or. Correct. Microsoft. Yeah. So you, it's all run by JSM Chat on the back end, which is the Assist app. You create the intents, and then it, it communicates with that. Um, so all of that is unique to your space. We don't share your data externally. It's all specifically okay. to you, uh, so you don't have to worry about anything. And could, could you connect to both clients at once? Currently, no, but it okay. is on our agenda to, to make awesome. that broader. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is there any plans to provide any sort of like migration support from other chatbots? Like we currently are using a different tool. Are you guys going to provide any sort of support to say like, yeah, let's get us into this instead? Um, any we, plans there? We don't have any current plans on migrating from other chatbots, but we should chat about what you're using and, and see if there's some sort of API or some sort of export we could do. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, during flow creation, uh, what options are available to you? Can you connect to a database? Can you run an SSI package? Send an email? Yeah, so with the teams? Yeah, so that's why we're starting by adding an, the first advanced step we're adding is that web request because it has the most opportunity, right? We want to make additional things in the future too, but that will allow you to connect to any sort of web request, like you could even just connect to Jira Automations and you can hit any of the actions from there. Um, and so if you wanted to send an email, you would hit Jira Automations, it would go through that and then the success would come back to the flow. Thanks. Hi, so I had a question about permissions and roles. Um, are they gonna have a, like a unique set of permissions that I can maybe allow some people in their own project to just do this, but not all the other admin things? Because that's sometimes a problem. 
Yeah, right now it is a project setting, so it is turned on per site um, through a feature flag. So it will be available to every project that has project admin settings, but you have to be a project admin in order to enable and set up anything here. Um, we are exploring having different permission sets for the virtual agent if you want to do it from like a global admin perspective to only give certain projects permissions, but right now it is complete site-wide across your JSM. Uh, hi, I have a, we are an IT department that supports multiple organizations, multiple Slack orgs, multiple Confluence sites, multiple Jira sites. Is there, can we hook all of that up into one chatbot? Is it like multiple Slack workspaces or a Slack enterprise grid? We're not on grid. Okay, so it's different client. It's like Different client. clients, yeah. Um, we can do it through shared channels. You, okay. Yeah. Sure and it'll still work. cooperate? Yeah. And then we can, can we do search over two different Confluence sites? No, right now it is linked to one Confluence, um, one Confluence site. It's specific to the project. So, you know, like when you have your project settings and you have the KB and you can mm -hmm. link it to a space, we acknowledge the space that it's linked to and that's the, what we search across. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. We have time for about one more question. I think I got someone right here. Perfect. Um, one of the limitations with Assist that we experience is that some of our users prefer to not put their question into a chat channel. They would like to chat with a specific yeah. chat bot, and so they're not exposing their question and potentially feeling stupid to their peers. Um, is that an option or something coming in the future potentially? I would like to put the VA directly into the assist chat, so when you're chatting, you can just tr go chat directly with the bot rather than going to a public request channel. Um, but that's currently not something that we have today, but hopefully soon. And then my other question is, we have multiple service projects across our company, um, for our HR department, for our IT department, for our legal department. Does the chat bot span the entirety of our instance or just a specific project? Right now it's a VA per project. So your VA, if you have an IT VA, it will only look at IT intents. If you have an HR VA, it'll only look at HR intents. Gotcha. We are, if we do launch, for example, directly talking to the bot, we'd have to be able to search across multiple VAs, right? And so that's something that we'll have to Great. solve as well. Thank you. Cool.